What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Hidesale has just gone live and in this quick video, I'll be showing you everything you need to know about hosting your own dedicated Hidesale server completely for free. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. But before we do, this video was sponsored by Apex Hosting. If you're looking for a powerful Minecraft or Hidesale server host, look no further. With day one Hidesale support, Apex Hosting is a fantastic choice with powerful servers, great customer support, automated backups, free subdomains, and so much more, you can't go wrong with Apex Hosting. Click the first link in the description down below and check the top of the screen for your current coupon code. Right now, it's Apex 25 for 25% off your first order. Simply hit Get Your Server and then choose Minecraft, Java, Bedrock, or even Hightail as soon as it goes live. Customize your server as you see fit, place your order, making sure to use code Apex 25, and in no time, you'll have your own dedicated server. A huge shout out to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. So the process for setting up your own dedicated Hightail server is rather simple. In the description down below, you'll find the official support article, which takes you through everything you need to know. But as there's a huge amount of text, I'll be running through things here just to make things a lot easier for you. Simply head across to this link down below, scroll down just a little bit to the first section, server setup, and here you'll see the minimum requirements. They recommend at least four gigs of memory and Java 25 installed, where both x64 and ARM64 are supported. So basically most systems. If you haven't already got Java 25 installed, you can head across to the next link down below, Adoptium, where you can download the latest version of Java 25. Simply scroll down, make sure you have Java 25 selected, and then simply choose under Windows JRE for a slightly smaller download and then right next to it MSI which is the installer. Once the file downloads you can open it up and install Java 25. There we go. Just clicking through it. Associate with jars turned on. Fantastic. There we go. Once the installation is complete, scrolling past installing Java as we just covered that, you can double check by using this command to see which version you're running. Right below this, we actually get to the server files. Now here, we can either manually copy from our launcher installation or download the Hightail server using the Hightail downloader CLI. While you can copy the files out of this path here, mine's currently still downloading, so I won't show you that here until later on. But the much easier and more reliable method for or other computers is the Hidesail downloader. Simply scrolling down a little bit, you'll eventually get to this section here. Download the Hidesail downloader for Linux and Windows. Click this, a zip file will download. Open the zip when it's done, and inside of here, we've got the Hidesail downloader. Now we'll make a folder where we want our server to live. So I'll make a new folder on my desktop, simply called, let's say, Hidesail. I'll open it up, and we'll just extract the files from the zip we just downloaded. Once we've done so, we can delete the zip, and now we've got the installer here. All we need to do now is run this, so just double-click Hidesail Downloader Windows, and you should see this pop up on your screen. You'll get a link over here, which all we need to do is drag around to copy, and then right-click. This copies it to your clipboard. Alternatively, if you see it underlined when you hover over it, you can either click or control-click to open it inside of a browser. Simply head across to that link in a browser and hit Approve once you've signed in. Eventually, you'll see device authorized, and we can now successfully close this window, where in the background, you should see the Hightail server is now downloading. Inside of the same folder, you'll see a couple of new files, and all we need to do is wait for this to complete. Once it has, you'll see a large one and a half gig zip file, which is the game files. We'll just open up the zip, and inside of here, you'll see two different files, a server folder and an assets.zip. What I'll do is I'll open up the server folder within our zip and extract these files here. Then Heading back to the zip, go up one folder or back a folder and you'll see assets.zip. Drag and drop this to the same folder here so everything's next to each other. While the downloader tool is useful, if you've already got the game installed, you can head across to this path listed here. Now that it's finished downloading, I can show you. Right-click, copy, hold start or the Windows key and press R to open up the run at dialog. Paste that path in here and hit enter. When you do, this folder will open up. You'll see a client folder, a server folder, and assets zip. And of course, these two files are the ones that we actually need. These are the ones that download in the zip when you use the server downloader. Instead, if you want to use this method, you can open up the server folder and copy these files out, then also copy the assets zip. Later on though, you can point to the specific location of assets.zip and you don't need to have a second copy of this on your PC. Instead, you can use this path up here to point to it later on. Just keep that in mind for now. Then we'll need to create 
create a server starter dot bat file. So simply right click anywhere in a blank space, choose new and text document. Then we'll be selecting everything, including dot text, and we'll call it either run dot bat or start dot bat, whatever is easiest for you to remember. You should see a pop up like this. We can choose yes, and the icon for it should change. If you don't see .txt or .exe, things like that, at the very top, hit view, followed by show, and make sure both file name extensions and hidden items are checked. On Windows 10, on the ribbon bar at the top, you'll see view and these two options as checkboxes on the right. Once you've got both of them ticked, you can remove .txt and name it .bat. We'll open this with any text editor, so I'll right-click and choose edit, which should open it with notepad. Now, inside of here, we'll add the actual command to start our server. Referring back to the setup guide, scrolling down just a little, here we go, running a Hidesale server, java jar Hidesale jar assets path to assets.zip. We'll copy this and we'll paste it inside of this text file. Hidesale server.jar does exist in the same place as this .bat file, so we don't need to do anything fancy there. And of course, assets.zip as well. The reason that it says path to assets.zip and not just assets.zip, which is what we'll call it, is because you might have it in a different place, like c temp assets.zip, and you can let multiple Hightail servers reference the same assets zip file. Because assets is in the same folder as this .bat file we just made, all we need to do is make sure the name matches. So assets.zip and we've changed this to assets.zip. That's it. Save the file and close it. If you'd like to prevent the window vanishing when the Hightail server closes or crashes on the following line, you can add pause to keep this window open until you press a key. So we'll save, close, and now we can run start.bat. As you can see in the background, our Hightail server is starting and that's it. When your server eventually boots up, you'll see a bunch of green text saying, hey, your server is booted. And at this point, we're not able to join it just yet. We need to authenticate our server. For this, checking back to the help docs, you can see after the first launch, authenticate your server with slash auth login device. So we'll paste in that here or type slash auth space login space device, hit enter, and now we get the same link as before. We'll copy the longer one, including the code by dragging around it and right clicking to copy, or if it's underlined, hold control and click it. Once again, navigating to it in a browser, approving the request, we've now successfully authenticated our server. There you go. Looking back at the window, as you can see, it's now linked with my techno account, which is my username, and that's it. As you can see, credentials are stored in memory only, and they'll be lost on server restart. Instead, we can use slash auth persistence, followed by a type to keep this forever, so we don't need to enter it every time we start our server. We'll enter slash auth space persistence, and we'll type encrypted just after it. Here, I'm dragging around the text, right-clicking to copy, and right-clicking to paste. Once we hit enter, at this point, if we have a look inside of our server's folder, you can now see an auth.enc file, which is our authentication, and it'll stay between restarts. Fantastic. You can also see there's a bunch of unnecessary files here. We can hold control to select multiple files and delete the zip file we downloaded using the Hightail downloader, the Linux Hightail downloader, and the quickstart.md. Just a quick refresher, these three files came with the downloader, which we selected here. And of course, the zip file, the smaller one, is the server files that we've just extracted. We can safely delete all four of these files. There we go. Now, with a slightly cleaner looking folder, we can actually get to finishing up. So, having a look at back at the manual, scrolling down further, we can check arguments for the launcher, for which we can run this command to see a bunch of help info, including accepting early plugins, which is going to allow us to load early plugins, which could cause instability, allow OP, obviously, so you can OP yourself, assets we've already covered, auth mode, authenticated or offline, same as Minecraft, I would assume, bind if you want to bind it to a specific IP, backup to enable automatic backups, which is an important one, backup directory and backup frequency. If you'd like to enable backups, I'd recommend copying, hyphen hyphen backup and inside of your start.bat file, we'll open this up once more with notepad. So right click edit and inside of here, right after assets, we'll add a space and we'll enter hyphen hyphen backup to enable backups. Then we'll set a backup directory as such, followed by a folder path. I'll make a new folder inside of our server folder here, simply titled backup. And as it's in the same folder as our start.zip, I'll just enter backup here. If you wanna put it in a different place, remember to surround it in double quotes and you can type in things like C downloads backup, for example. 
as the folders in the same directory as the start.bat, I've just titled it backup. Finally, backup frequency. According to the docs is the backup interval in minutes. The default is 30 and we don't need to add this and explicitly set it, but you can if you wish. Saving this file and closing it, the next time we start up our server, automated backups should be live. Scrolling down further, port, the default port is 5520, and we've got some info on firewalls and network configurations. Then scrolling down past this, we can have a look at the file structure. So we've got a logs folder for logs, mods for mods, universe, which contains the world and player save data, bands.json, as well as a whitelist.json, which contain whitelisted or banned players, which are just simple text files you can open with notepad and edit, config.json, which allows us to customize our server. So if we right click config.json and open it with notepad, you'll be able to customize some things in here like your server's name, which I'll call troubleshoots server. We can set a message of the day, so hey all. We can set a password for our server, which is usually pretty good to set. If you're hosting a private server, set your max number of players, view radius, change the default game mode, enable mods, and things like that down here. For now, I've just set the server name, MOTD, and I'll leave the password blank so anyone can join. I'll save the file and close it. You've also got a permissions JSON file, which you can use to customize permissions for different players. Scrolling down further, it details how the config file looks, as you can see here. Down to tips and tricks, we've got some info on installing mods, disabling crash reporting, leveraging caching, which should help speed up your server's startup times, which we can actually activate by adding this little command to the very start of our start.bat file. I'll copy this and I'll probably have the finalized command down below. Editing start.bat once more, we'll add it right after Java at the very beginning. Now, the next time we start up our server, it should be a little bit faster. Then we've got some recommended plugins, for which there's a few Nitrado plugins and a Apex hosting plugin. Pretty cool, as they're the sponsor of this video. Few distance options, as well as multi-server architecture and a bunch more info, which we won't be covering here, as well as future additions and what they're planning. The only thing that we really need to worry about at this point is, is our server running, which, assuming you double-click start.bat, your server is working. We can actually go ahead and join it. So if we tab across into the Hightail launcher, click play, Hypixel starts up, and now we can head across to servers, followed by add a server, and we can give the address either localhost, as such, let's make that window a bit bigger, or 127.0.0.1. When we add our server, after adding a name, we go, you should see our server is live and we're able to join it. So just double clicking, we're loading. And if we have a look at the terminal in the background, there's a bunch of info scrolling past. If we type something in the chat, you should see it appear on our server as well. Fantastic. If I use slash op add techno, for example, you can see we're now an operator and we can use different commands in game. Pretty cool. At this point, you're able to play the game as you see fit. However, there's one major issue. You and only you are able to play on your server at this current point. There's two extra things we need to handle, which is the same as hosting a Minecraft server yourself, and that's your firewall and port forwarding. While both of them sound pretty spooky, I'll be covering everything you need to know here. So, starting off, your firewall rules. Scrolling up and back towards the firewall and network configuration section, you'll see this Windows Defender firewall command. If we simply select all of the text inside here and right-click copy it, we can actually use this command in an admin PowerShell window to allow port 5520 UDP through our Windows firewall as a Hightail server. It's a much quicker way around than hitting start, opening up your firewall and typing in things yourself. So hit start, type in PowerShell, and right-click Windows PowerShell to choose Run as Administrator. Inside of the window that pops up, simply just Control-V or right-click to paste the command we copied, and then hit Enter a few times to make sure it runs. Now, just like that, we've allowed Hightail through our Windows Firewall. If you want someone sitting next to us to connect to our server, connected to the same router, they just need to know your computer's local IP address. For this, you can type in ipconfig, one word, and hit enter. This will show you all the different network adapters you have on your system. All you need to do is look for how we're connected to the internet. In my case, it's the Ethernet adapter Ethernet, and you can see IPv4 address. My PC's local IP is 192.168.1.51. Someone sitting next to me connected to the same router can use this IP address to join our server. That's cool and all, but what about friends over the internet? Well, that's where things get a little bit more confusing, but it's not that bad at all. Port forwarding. Port forwarding is the easiest way to get things working without third-party programs like Tailscale and things like that. And as long as you can figure it out once, it's basically done forever. If you've port forwarded Minecraft before, you already know exactly what to do here. 
what you need to do is head across to your router's administrator dashboard and log in. As every router is different in its own way, I've created a generic example router here just to show you what you're looking for. Basically, you're heading across to the security and port forwarding, application forwarding, game forwarding, something along those lines section where you can then enter an external internal port, choose a protocol, set a local IP and forward a port. Right now, I've got Minecraft port forwarded up here, which is great. All we'll do is we'll add Hidesale in a similar fashion. From the manual, scrolling down, the default port for the game, which we can change if you're going to be running more than one server on the same network connection, is port 5520. Inside of our router's admin panel, we'll use the port 5520 and enter it both for the external and internal, in and out, or something along those lines. As I need to enter a range, so two numbers for each, I'll simply copy and paste the same number into both. Then, Hidesale only uses UDP, so I'll select UDP for the protocol type, and finally, we'll finish it off with our local IP address, for which most of it is already typed in here. Referring back to our PowerShell window, command prompt window, or anything along those lines, when we use the command IP config and find the way we're connected to the internet, mine was Ethernet, IPv4 address, this is what our router is looking for. In my case, I just need to enter 51. So that's what I'll do here. Add new and bam, just like that. Players over the internet should be able to join our high sale server. All we need to do is Google what is my IP and share our external IP address with other players. It's that simple. Obviously, yours will look a little bit different to this and you'll need to research your particular router, but the steps are basically exactly the same. Once you've got it once, you and your friends are basically able to play forever as long as your actual server is running in the background. We can use the command forward slash help hitting into once more to bring up the commands info where we'll see a bunch of different commands we can use from bans to authing, chunks, copy, cut, etc. The only command we really need to know from this list here for server maintenance is the stop command which gently brings your server to a close. If we choose send a chat for slash stop or we type slash stop in our server terminal, we'll gently bring the server to a close with everything saved. That's it. Your server will be shut down until the next time you start up that same start or run.bat file we set up. That's that. As we did customize the start.bat file just a little, adding automated backups as well as a slightly faster startup time, these should both start working the next time we start up our server. However, there is a little bit more that we can do for optimization, and that's allocating our server some more RAM. While not super important for vanilla gameplay, as soon as you have more than just a few players or you have more than a few mods on your server, you are going to need to use just a little bit more RAM. And very similar to a Minecraft server, you can use the same XMX and XMS commands to raise the amount of RAM your server is allocated. Scrolling down to miscellaneous details, Java CLI arguments, we get some info about XMS and XMX, which, if we open it in a new tab, takes us across to this page here, explaining exactly what these things do. We can add, very similar to Minecraft, the same old, just before the jar, hyphen XMS for starting and XMX for maximum amount of RAM we have allocated to our server. As Hydesail is recommended to use at least 4 gigs of RAM, that's what we'll use for the starting number, XMS 4G for 4 gigabytes of RAM. We can also change the maximum XMX to something a bit bigger. If we open up our task manager with Control Shift and Escape, then head across to the performance tab, we can see under memory how much RAM we currently have installed in our system and how much is currently in use. Obviously, I've got a ludicrous number here. Yours might be something along the lines of 16 gigs total with 6 gigabytes in use, leaving us with 10 lying around, which we can use for our server. While it might be nice to give our server the entire 10 gigs, you are going to need to leave some for Windows, Discord, your browser, things like that. So instead of 10, maybe 9. But if you're also going to be playing the game, you'll need to leave some RAM for that as well. So you could probably remove 4 or 5 gigs from it and set your maximum according to that. If you're only going to be hosting a server on this particular computer, you can set it to basically as high as you want to use as much of that free RAM as possible to get the best performance out of your server, especially when it's handling multiple players and multiple mods. But yeah, that's basically it. The next time we start up our server, all our changes should have taken place and automated backups are set up. The startup should be a little bit quicker. And of course, the only thing left to do is to run around and have fun. 
But yeah, that's basically it. A huge shout out again to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. I do have my own Hightail creator code if you want to help me out. Use the code TCNO whenever you're purchasing something from Hightail. And of course, if you'd like to learn about modding Hightail, modding your Hightail server, setting up a whitelist and things like that, make sure to check the description down below and stay subscribed for more Hightail videos. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.